Welcome to Badminton Unlimited, your weekly access to badminton action and beyond. This week, we chat with Spain's top men's singles player, Pablo Abian, about the challenges in becoming the best. And we delve into the world of para badminton when we dropped in on the Malaysia para badminton team in Kuala Lumpur. Having recently wrapped up her second successive world championship title, Carolina Marin's name is on everybody's lips. Her achievements have also placed her country Spain firmly on badminton's global map. But before there was Marin, there was another Spaniard flying the red and yellow flag in the international arena. European Games men's singles gold medalist Pablo Avian may not have reached the heights of Marin, but he's an Olympic veteran. Competing at the Olympic Games is the greatest thing for an athlete. I'm fortunate to have played in two Olympic Games in 2008 and 2012. Now my goal is focused on making it to a third in Rio 2016. The 30-year-old shuttler was competing at the recently concluded Total BWF World Championships where he shared his badminton journey with us. For a country steeped in football traditions, Abian was steered into badminton by his sports-loving family. Football is very popular in Spain. Badminton is still a minor sport that a lot more people have to know about and play. I started playing in my hometown Calatayud, which is a small city next to Zaragoza with a population of about 22,000 people. My father is a physical education teacher and founded the San Inigo Sports Association of Calatayud. As a result of that, my older siblings started to play and then I tried it. I liked it and at first I combined it with other sports but the time came when I had to choose one and of course I chose badminton. His development was rapid and he began to excel. In 2003, his efforts were awarded as he was asked to train with the national team based in Madrid. Two years later, Abian won his maiden international title in Brazil. While he would taste many more international challenge tournament wins, the Spaniard has yet to replicate his form at the Grand Prix or World Super Series events. The truth is, in 2005, when I won my first international title in Brazil, I wasn't expecting it. It was one of the first international championships representing my country that I was in, and winning a title is always important for the career of an athlete. There's a difference between the international challenges and the World Super Series tournaments. Entering the World Super Series as the main draw, you get a set of points that might be important for a player and the chance to advance rounds. Going into qualifications means playing two or three rounds of very difficult matches. That's why you choose one tournament or another, depending on what your position is in the world rankings at that moment. Titles may have eluded him so far on the international badminton circuit, but he recently found solace within the continental scene. In June's European Games in Baku, the shuttler won his nation's only gold in badminton. Winning the gold at the European Games in Baku was a huge morale boost. It was a very nice and different competition to which I arrived with a lot of hope and ambition to win the title. I knew it was a really difficult competition. In fact, seeing the draw and the group, I had very tough opposition. I thought I might not even pass to the finals, but the feeling I had from the first match was very good and my goal was to fight for the gold. I knew it was going to be hard, but in the end, it all worked out great. What made it even sweeter was that he had been competing with funds he raised on his own. Abian hopes his recent success 
will ensure a smoother passage as he chases down his third Summer Games appearance. It is true that in the last three years, I haven't been treated fairly by the Spanish Badminton Federation. Well, it's a very difficult situation for an athlete, but with the help of my club, family and friends, I have been able to get ahead and keep myself at a high level. It's a complicated situation which I've had to live with, but there's a year left until the Olympics, and I hope to play in more tournaments and with better resources. Spain's challenge at next year's Rio Olympics will no doubt be led by Carolina Marin. For Abian, after his history-making performance at the London Games four years ago, he's content to take it one step at a time. I think that Carolina's World Championship victory has been very significant for Spain, and especially for her since she achieved a singles title. At the London Olympics in 2012, I played much better and I managed to win my first match against the Czech, Petr Kukal. It was important to get the first victory at the Olympics for a Spanish player in men's singles. The goal right now is to go from tournament to tournament and well, first I have to qualify and then I'll set my final goals for Rio 2016. Poner los objetivos de resultado para Rio 2016. Pablo Abian is a perfect example of a player who doesn't give up. While all eyes are on his famous compatriot for more Spanish success, you can be sure Abian will not let his country down once he gets on the big stage. Time to test your badminton knowledge. We want you to name the last English players to have won at the prestigious Yonex All England Championships. We tell you the answer after the break. We're in Kuala Lumpur when we return and we find out more about Malaysia's para badminton team. Before the break, we asked you to name the last English players to have won at the prestigious Yonex All England Championships. The answer is Nathan Robertson and Gail Ems. The duo defeated Denmark's Thomas Leiborn and Camilla Ritterjul to clinch the All England Mixed Doubles title in 2005. They remain the last badminton players from England to taste victory in the world's oldest badminton tournament. Silver medalists at the 2004 Athens Olympics and with golds at the Commonwealth Games, World Championships and the European Championships in 2006, Robertson and Ems are regarded as one of the country's all-time best mixed doubles pairs. Whether at a professional level or recreational, one of the joys of badminton is that it can be played by all. Whilst the nature of the sport showcases the athleticism and stamina of those who play, you'd be mistaken if you thought it was just for the able-bodied. The world of badminton for athletes with impairments or para-badminton is just as intense and competitive. Badminton Unlimited recently flew to Kuala Lumpur, the capital of Malaysia, to find out more about its para-badminton team. The squad was preparing for the upcoming Para Badminton World Championships in England when we dropped by. Malaysia is amongst the top nations in the sport. Its shuttlers have collected more than 200 medals, including 94 golds in the last 15 years. You feel satisfied when you build up a team or build up someone who can play a reasonably well badminton. That's why it encourages. Before he took up his role as Para Badminton coach, Mo Chin Kiet was well known for mentoring several of Malaysia's illustrious players, including the Siddiq brothers. In 1999, he began his journey guiding athletes with impairments. 
In para badminton, the players are divided into six sport classes according to their impairments. The wheelchair categories are for players who require a wheelchair to play the game and have impairments in their lower limbs and or trunk function. The standing category is subdivided into three classes. They are for those with impairments in their lower or upper limbs. The three classes are standing lower three, standing lower four, and standing upper five. The short stature class is for players who have a genetic condition often referred to as dwarfism. Specialized training is tailored to the needs of the players in different categories. Mo and his team of volunteer coaches work tirelessly guiding and honing the skills of the shuttlers. For the leg problem, we need to do more on the hand. And then for those without arm, they need to learn how to balance it. Because if they have a strong leg, they can do anything they like. For the shuttlers in wheelchairs, the training is equally challenging. During the game, a full court is used for a doubles match while in singles, half the court is utilized. But the preparation and intensity is the same. Using a half a court, and then without the front short service line, which is very difficult, unless you have very good accuracy to send the shutter away from your opponent. Normally, we do a lot of target. They show target to the right corner or to the left corner, a left base or right base. To every shot be clear, be concise, where the direction of shuttle to be sent. Actually, the badminton uh, wheelchair is uh, difficult uh, games, you know. Not many, play, uh, not many players, they want to join this, this uh, badminton wheelchair because it's difficult. They must know to control this wheelchair and control the racket, so it's not easy to them. Mudsland Saibon is one of the country's medal hopefuls for the World Championships. There are currently close to 30 shuttlers across various states representing Malaysia, but due to the high expenses, the country is sending only eight of its best players to Stoke Mandeville. In Malaysian Parabintan, we, have, we are lucky to have a, a good players, a few good players. We have the wheelchair classes, we have the, actually he's number three in the world, and we have the classes, standing class, standing lower classes, we have in the top four, and we have the Upper standing upper classes, we have the we, are, we have the world champions. We have uh, likes of Charlie Howe, and previously he was, he was partnering uh, Swali Laman, who has retired. Now he's partnering for the they're they are, they are number one in the world now. See, we have actually we are lucky to have these these guys in our team because it's not easy to find uh, talented players. But with many of the current shuttlers reaching the veteran stage of their career, there is a need to replenish the talent pool. With financial backing from the National Sports Council and the support from Badminton Association of Malaysia, it is the hope of the athletes and the coaches that more persons will come to enjoy the sport. I need to formulate a few more, few more states to have uh, more coaches. From there, they get the young players, train there. Then we group them in the next year. We hope for by next year they can group in a bigger group of players to form for our future players. Because I depend on now only about eight of the youngsters, which I think is not enough. We have to have a bigger pool to come up. Big things are in store for para badminton players in Malaysia. The Badminton World Federation's successful bid for the inclusion of the sport in the 2020 Paralympic Games in Tokyo has also given the team something to which to aspire. Okay, my hope is that our Malaysian team will achieve at least uh, one medal, hopefully a gold medal for the uh, country. And this will break open, break open the sports to everybody in Malaysia that badminton is there for the taking. It's a big boost if we can win the medal in uh, Tokyo in 2020. The future continues to look bright for Malaysian para badminton. Passion and determination can only make the team stronger as the shuttlers work to keep the sport growing from strength to strength. After the break, we speak to a young Singaporean player about her hopes for badminton in her country.
After a mini break, the MetLife BWF World Super Series is back in action this week at the Yonex Open Japan. Here's a quick reminder of the BWF Destination Dubai rankings. World champion Chen Long tops the men's singles list after grabbing three of the six World Super Series titles in England, Malaysia and Australia in the first half of the season. Danes Jana Jorgensen and Victor Axelsen are in second and fourth respectively. And Japan's latest sensation Kento Momota takes third spot after impressive wins at the OUE Singapore Open and BCA Indonesia Open. Spain's Carolina Marin leads the women's singles rankings after victories at the Yonex All England Open, Maybank Malaysia Open and Star Australian Open. Having successfully defended her World Championship title, she's in good form for more as the second half of the World Super Series season kicks off. India's golden girl Saina Newal is in second and she'll be keen to add to her Yonex Sunrise India Open victory earlier this year. Ratchanok Intanon of Thailand occupies third place and three Chinese players fill positions fourth to sixth. Top of the men's doubles rankings are Kanichi Hayakawa and Hiroyuki Endo. Despite not winning a World Super Series event so far this year, their regular appearances at every finals weekend has seen the pair amass the most points. China's Zhang Nan and Fu Haifeng and Chai Piao and Hong Wei are second and third respectively, while world number one Li Yongdae and Yu Yongsung are in fourth. Mohamed Asan and Hendra Setiawan occupy fifth place and the newly crowned world champions will be eager to continue their strong showing in the remainder of the World Super Series season. Leading the women's double standings are Misaki Matsutomo and Ayaka Takahashi. With only one title coming at the Yonex Sunrise India Open early this year, the Japanese duo will surely be looking to consolidate their top position on home ground this week at the Yonex Open Japan. Hot on their heels are the impressive Chinese twins Luo Yu and Luo Ying, while the Total BWF World Championships finalists Christina Pedersen and Camilla Rito Yule take third spot. With three World Super Series titles to their names so far, Zhang Nan and Zhao Yunlei sit on top of the mixed doubles pile. You can be almost certain the world champions will add more to their title haul in the coming months. China's Liu Cheng and Bao Yixin and Xu Chen and Ma Jin are in third and fourth respectively. In second and breaking China's dominance at the top are Indonesia's Tontawi Ahmad and Liliana Natsir. Be sure to catch the top players' battle for points to reach the season-ending finale in Dubai. It all kicks off again in Tokyo this week at the Yonex Open Japan. Don't forget the Destination Dubai rankings are updated every Thursday after a World Super Series tournament, so log on to www.bwfworldsuperseries.com to get the latest news and information. In this week's One for the Future, Badminton Unlimited brings you an inspiring young talent from Singapore. Meet Grace Chua, a teenager who dares to dream and has had to make tough decisions along the way in order to pursue her badminton passion. What started as a hobby as a child soon became her sporting career as she was spotted by the national selectors. So at the start, my parents just sent me and my two older brothers for a badminton class at a community club. And we just uh, started playing for fun. And from there, that was around, I think I was around six or seven then. Then after that, I took part in a competition and I managed to go quite far and I was invited into the junior squad by SDA. And that's how I started my badminton journey. In her pre-teens, the shuttler's good performances in local competitions did not go unnoticed and she was offered a place at the Singapore Sports School. Despite being courted by the country's leading sports school, Grace chose to stay at her school. I was from Methodist Girls School Primary and so I really liked the school and uh, my friends there and the teachers. So I wanted to continue in Methodist Girls School Secondary. And besides that, I felt that uh, at that age, I still wanted to balance both my studies and my sports. And 
I guess if I went to sports school, the focus would be more on sports and less on studies. So that's why I didn't choose to go there. Her choice to play both sports competitively and continue with her studies has hampered her badminton development as the sport is not available in her school. Grace had to seek alternative options for badminton. And as for school training, well, we didn't have any, so uh, I was kind enough to be allowed to join training at ACSI because MGS and ACS are brother and sister school, so I was able to train there and that would be considered part of my training attendance for my CCA. Since we didn't have a team, I couldn't take part in like the inter-school team events, but I could still take part in the individual events. It hasn't been easy for the youngster travelling between two schools across the island for studies and badminton. But Grace is one of the few that has done well in both. She was the national women's singles champion in the under-13 and under-17 age groups. And last year, the Singaporean grabbed bronze in girl singles at the ASEAN School Games held in the Philippines. The same year, she aced the International Baccalaureate examinations, scoring an impressive 44 out of 45. In a country where the pursuit of academics is highly valued, Grace has decided to take the path less travelled. In wanting to take her badminton to the next level, the 19-year-old this year made the bold move to put aside her studies to focus on badminton. I felt that having completed 12 years of formal education, I think badminton was something that I always really liked and wanted to pursue. But so far, I was always just balancing both studies and sports. So now that I graduated from junior college, I felt that it's quite appropriate for me to be able to pursue badminton full-time and I think studies, I can put aside my studies for now because I'll still be able to go to university in the future. So right now I just want to focus on badminton and put all my effort there and see how far I can go. The 19-year-old participated in her first major sporting event earlier this year at the Southeast Asian Games. The shuttler helped her country to bronze in the women's team event and tasting a podium finish at a major event has spurred her to chase her sporting dream. In both matches, I played against very good and highly ranked players and it was my first time that I played against such good opponents. Even though I lost both my games, I, there's still a lot of takeaways from both my matches that I can work on. It was a very good experience because we were split on home ground. Even though I was losing, people would still cheer for me and it really gave me the motivation to fight hard. Grace's hunger for badminton has also rubbed off on those around her. It has inspired other girls to take up badminton and they managed to form a team to represent MGS at the Interschools competition in her final year there. It's an admirable achievement as badminton has since been established as a co-curricular activity in her school. Well, I hope that more people would be willing to take up badminton full-time because right now at the school level there are really a lot of people playing but once you get older, many people tend to drop out because there's this general idea that uh, Singapore badminton cannot make it in the international arena. So I hope they'll be able to change this perspective that many people have and show that uh, local-born Singaporeans are able to play well and, to, and that they, we are comparable to the international renowned players. Grace Tram may not be a world beater yet on the international scene, but her passion, courage and relentless pursuit of badminton is nothing less than world class. Get connected with us. Log on to these websites for videos and photos and get the latest news and information on all things badminton. Missed an episode of Badminton Unlimited? Or perhaps you just want to catch your favorite episode again? You can do so at your convenience on our YouTube channel. All the best badminton clips are just a click away. Let's find out what's happening on the international circuit in our Badminton Unlimited calendar. Next week on Badminton Unlimited, 
we chat with Indonesia's Debbie Susanto and Praveen Jordan about being next in line to be the country's top mixed double pair.